Hi, everybody. Welcome to this new episode of StageMaker Fridays. My name is Julian, and I'm a principal developer advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. Once again, please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. My name is Ségolène, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. All right. Thanks again for being with us. So um, where are we in this uh, season? So we are uh, at the second episode mm -hmm. of our uh, automation trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> automation trip. Yeah, quite a trip. Uh, so last week we uh, started to discuss uh, model deployment, model monitoring, some ops concerns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this week uh, we are going to dive into pipelines. Okay. So the whole episode is dedicated to building an end-to-end -end pipeline. Okay. So if that's your thing, stay around. Okay. And uh, and of course we have more uh, e episodes coming in the next few weeks on automation, and then uh, we'll dive into AutoML. And let's see what happens there. Anything can happen with AutoML. It should be fun. <laughs> okay. Um, so Sego, uh, we got some moderator. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, if you have questions, uh, <laughs> please ask all your questions. We have uh, we have colleagues, very friendly colleagues and expert colleagues who are waiting for your questions. So thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, so all your questions are welcome. Okay. So ask all the questions. Make sure you learn as much as, much as you as can. Possible. Okay. All right. Now we've got this covered. <laughs> uh, we can talk about the um, the content for this week. So we are just like last week. We are revisiting mm -hmm. um, an um, an example that we covered earlier in the season, but like I said, we're going to focus on automation. So Sego, can you uh, give us a quick recap of, of uh, on course, this use case? Of course, Julian. So uh, this week we are going to work on the fraud det detection uh, use case. So okay. uh, in episode two of this new season of Safe Friday, we train a model uh, to figure out if an auto insurance claim is fraudulent or not. Mm -hmm. So we also analyzed a bias in the data set and we applied mitigation techniques. Oh yeah, that yeah. was good. You remember yeah, this yeah, one? Yeah. If, you, yeah, if you haven't watched it, <laughs> bias mitigation techniques, bias mitigation. very cool <laughs> stuff. Episode two. So yes, <laughs> mitigation techniques in order to uh, build a, met a better model. And now uh, in this episode, we are going to focus on the automation okay. again. And uh, we are going to build an end-to-end -end, uh, pipeline that includes uh, all the steps from episode two. Mm -hmm. And after we are going to add the automation steps. Okay, so pretty much everything we see here, right? Mm -hmm. So data prep, uh, feature store, training, um, bias possibly, bias. Um, and then deploying will automate all that stuff and get rid of all those complicated notebooks that we saw earlier. So that's good news, right? Good news. Keep it simple. So here is the um, notebook or the set of notebooks we're actually going to use, mm -hmm. right? So screenshot time. Screenshot and time. as usual, Sego will remind me to show <laughs> this before we end the episode, okay? So don't worry if you didn't catch it, okay? All right, so that's about as much slides as you will see today. And now let's jump into our example, okay? So just a quick recap, okay, mm -hmm. in case you didn't see uh, that uh, episode where we prepared data, etc. What did we do here? Um, so we actually run through notebooks uh, one, two, three, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Uh, where we prepare data with the SageMaker Data Wrangler. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we train the model and we worked on bias, etc. Okay, so we're uh, actually picking up at notebook five. So if you're following me, that means we did not run notebook four mm -hmm. because uh, last week episode focused on uh, deploying endpoints, uh, model monitoring, mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Okay, so if you're interested specifically in that, go and watch. Uh, last week's episode. Today we're going straight uh, to full automation, but we'll we'll discuss endpoints a little bit. So don't worry, you won't be confused. Uh, okay, so that's where we're starting. Okay, and uh, if you again, if you've not run this episode before, you can find lots of information in that uh, 
first notebook here. Um, and again, our goal is to automate all of it today. Okay. Uh, so maybe just a quick word about the data set. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what does it look like? Uh, and, and what kind of model did you train? Mm -hmm. So uh, for this example, we are going to have uh, two data sets. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the goal of this um, uh, episode is to try to see if an uh, insurance claim is fraudulent or not. So okay. we need data regarding the uh, claims mm -hmm. and we need data regarding the customer. So yeah, we can take a quick look. Two data sets, one for the claims, one for the customer. And we're going to we're going to do a binary classification with okay. HGBOS in order to see if the claim is fraudulent or not. OK, so we have a CSV file with claims. Mm -hmm. Describing the okay, claims. With all the features. And of course, we have a label. Is this a fraud? Yes or no? And and this has a column named policy ID. Mm -hmm. And we find this column again in the customer data set. So that's the key, the join, <laughs> the join. The join column. And we see customer age, how long they've been a customer, et cetera, et cetera. Zip code, education, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So simple CSV data set. Okay. Uh, there's a bit of preparation that we can do with uh, SageMaker Data Wrangler. Um, but we all, as you can see here, we also have pre-processed work. Mm -hmm. So if you want to jump straight to that, uh, you, you can do that. Okay. So once we've processed the data, what do we do next? So we store our data in the SageMaker feature store. Okay. Yeah. So feature store, yeah. one feature group for claims, one feature group for customers. For user okay. and after, yes, we store the transform data set uh, in SageMaker feature store. And each one goes uh, into its own feature group. Okay. Okay. And so, of course, we're going, to, we're going to use this to build a data set. And we, we have a simple way to do this. Sego, tell us more. Athena. <laughs> yeah, Athena. Athena. So yes, in, uh, in order to build the, 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 the final data set, we are going to use um, Athena to query the offline feature store mm -hmm. and joining both data sets with our key policy idea. And as usual, we are going to split the data set uh, for training and validation data set. And finally, we will upload uh, the files into a tree. And then we train. And then we train. Okay. So, so quite classical. XJ boost binary classification. Delta in S3 and so on. And, and we'll show you uh, we'll show you the scripts. Uh, we'll show you the Python code that we actually inject in the pipeline. So you'll see how to create the data set. You'll see how to train the model. Okay. We'll, we'll look at those things again. Talk about you know script mode, and and some of those features that we covered earlier in the season. Okay. So. This is as far as we as we went. So now let's dive into pipelining. Mm -hmm. So the purpose here is really simple. So the purpose is take every single step mm -hmm. that we just discussed mm -hmm. and um, define it as a pipeline step with inputs, outputs, and connect them all. Exactly. So it's like Legos, right? Once again. And the output of one step become the Absolutely. input of the next step. Yes. Have you seen <laughs> the episode before? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, and you will see it's easy to connect them. So once we have connected those pipelines, well, uh, those steps as a pipeline, then we just run the pipeline. Okay. And, and we'll see in studio uh, a very nice visual visualization. Uh, visualization of the pipeline. We can see the executions. We can see the, the logs for each steps. And maybe I'll show you some failed executions just to, just for fun. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, it never works for me on the first try. You should know that. I, I'm just pretending. Okay? Uh, and as promised last week, we'll also show you the, the pipeline execution for uh, the music recommendation example. Okay, and just so you, you see another example. Okay, great. So let's let's get to work. So here we're going to work uh, only in one notebook. It all fits in one single notebook. So high level overview, define each step, mm -hmm. connect, connect them. Yeah. Um, and we'll see that we can connect them implicitly or explicitly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, of course, execute the pipeline and then uh, see all kinds of things happening in studio. Okay. All right. So let's, let's get to work.
Okay, so first we load some variables from the, from the previous notebooks. Of course, we import uh, some objects from the SageMaker SDK and uh, of course, all the pipelining and step mm -hmm. objects. Okay, some technical objects that we'll need to call SageMaker APIs, uh, potentially both or three APIs as well. Okay, lots of output path indeed mm -hmm. uh, because we need S3 uh, path uh, to store, you know, bias reports, yeah. training sets, artifacts, yeah. okay, as well. Yeah. Nothing, nothing really fancy. Instance types that we're going to use um, to uh, to parameterize the pipeline. We'll see in a second. We can actually uh, set parameters. So in this case, it's mostly, uh, you know, instance types that we want to use for the processing steps and instance counts, okay? All right, so again, this is the whole uh, workflow and we're going to work on each of those steps okay so first things first pipeline parameters oh. okay because <laughs> why do we need those so you could you could use hard-coded values but um of course you want those pipelines to be reasonably generic mm -mm. Uh, and what i mean by reasonably generic is you know there is such a thing as trying to be too generic and then it becomes nonsense because you have, you know, 500 parameters for, for stuff that should really be hard coded. So, you know, be reasonable, but indeed things like instance types, um, some, you know, maybe the location of the S3 data set, that kind of stuff, you know, is reasonable. Okay. And here we're going, uh, we're going easy. We have just the instance type. And the model approval status, okay, we'll come back to this guy but later, okay? But just remember, um, we have this status and it's defined to pending manual appro approval. And I'm, what I'm really getting at is it's not approved. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Somebody, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> Somebody will need to look manually <laughs> at the model and say, yes, it's good to be, to be deployed, okay? So you can define parameters and of course they can be integers, they can be floats, they can be strings. Okay. So just be reasonable, just like if you work with AWS CloudFormation for infrastructure as code, you know, you get a good sense of, okay, what is reasonable to have as a parameter and mm -hmm. what should really be a, a hard coded value. You, you know, use, use your own judgment. Okay. Um, so the first step, because we'll go, we'll try to go in logical order. We could define the steps in any order, mm -hmm. okay, and, and and then connect them at the end. But I guess you know it's the <laughs> engineer in me thinks it's slightly more Bitter. reasonable to go in order. But again, not everybody's brain works that way. I'm <laughs> totally fine if you want to start with the model deployment step. No. Okay. <laughs> Should we do it backwards? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, no, come on, we'll be reasonable. So <laughs> first step is um, the data wrangler step, okay, the pre-processing step. And if you remember um, the, the, the past episode, how did we run this programmatically, right? Because obviously this time we are not clicking and running stuff uh, manually in, in the data wrangler UI, mm -hmm. okay? We're running a SageMaker processing job and we're passing to that job the actual flow, right? The actual definition of um, of the pre-processing flow, and, and you can see you can see them here, right? Uh, so there's a flow for claims processing. There's a flow for Testing. customers processing. Okay, and these are just JSON files that list uh, all the transforms that you mm -hmm. manually created in Data Wrangler. Okay, we looked at that stuff in detail in, in previous episodes. So, of course, let's upload that file to S3, okay, fine. And let's define, um, let's define the input for the, the processing step, okay? So the, as you can see here, we use this object, SageMaker processing, processing input, okay? Which is of course the flow file we just uploaded, okay? But, uh, and, and maybe let me just open the file for a second. Yeah, see if it, it, see if it opens. So this is the flow and, and we see, you know, we see all the different steps that we created here. Um, so what we need to do 
is uh, we need to find in that flow the actual node okay. that we want to output data for. Okay, I think it's a, it's an interesting feature where uh, we could say, uh, you know, we just want, and we did this in a previous episode, we just want the output after, you know, the first X transforms, not all transforms, okay? So, so that's what we're doing here. There's a bit of code here to find this uh, node ID, uh, which is really the name of the node in that data prep flow where we want the output. So the inputs here are really, here's the flow, and here's the node output mm -hmm. in the flow where I want to uh, grab uh, data, okay? So that's what we do here, okay? Um, we, we find that name here. Okay? It's a little bit complicated to read here, but that's really what we're doing, okay? Okay, and, and so where do we store that stuff? Okay, where do we store the transform data? We store the transform data in, in feature store. store. Okay, so we do that in this feature group um, that, uh, that is defined. Okay, so that's the first, um, that's the first step. And then, and then basically, okay, here's the, uh, here's the actual step. Okay, the processor object is the, the compute that will just, the compute object that will just run the script, okay? And the step, okay, has a name, has compute attached to it, right? Uh, inputs, so the flow file, mm -hmm. and the node, and output uh, the feature group um, where we're storing that stuff, okay? So that's the, um, this one is for claims, okay? And we do the same with customers. Okay, so we upload flow file to S3. Um, we define that flow file as an input. We find the, the correct node. Uh, and you can absolutely open the, the flow files and, and, and find the node ID if you want it. Uh, here it's getting a little, maybe too fancy for my taste. <laughs> I would just hard code, or I would, maybe I would pass it as a parameter. Yeah, my yeah. God. Um, yeah, slightly, uh, slightly too complicated for me here. Uh, and the output again is the other uh, feature store uh, or the feature group, excuse me. Okay. Um, and so obviously these have been created before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so these are not created by the by the pipeline. Okay. Um, and and the reason you know you could create those because uh, earlier and use them again and again because uh, we we can use versioning. Uh, so uh, we can actually store multiple versions of the same features in the same uh, feature group because we have a timestamp. Okay, so those feature groups are supposed to be uh, pre-existing. Okay, so we have those two early steps, um, and yeah, maybe I can let's see. Not this one. Yeah, uh, no, sorry, not this one. Okay, so we've done those two here, right? Mm -mm. Okay, the data prep steps. And should I zoom in just a bit? Yes, okay. All right, okay, so we've done those two here. And they're not green yet because we haven't run anything, okay? <laughs> Hopefully they, they'll be green later. <laughs> okay, so the next step, so now we have process data for customers, process data for claims. Okay. So now, we want to we need to create the data set, okay? And creating the data set, as you explained, means running an Athena query, uh, joining the data sets on policy ID, uh, and, and saving, uh, you know, the training set, splitting and saving the training set and the validation set, okay? So this is what we do here, and we do this with a Python script, okay? Because mm -hmm. we need to run that query, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, we're going to take a look at this script in a second. So we upload it to, uh, to S3. We create our compute object, sklearn processor. Okay, framework version for sklearn, instance requirements, some name, and that's it. And then we can create the processing step where uh, 
we have uh, so we don't have inputs, okay? Because we're passing uh, we're passing the input data, so to speak, as command line arguments. Mm -hmm. Uh, so which uh, which Athena table to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Which uh, feature group names to use, and again, remember these are pre-existing. And when we by default, when we create feature groups, uh, we also get automatically uh, Athena tables that okay. we can query. Okay, so all this stuff comes from creating the feature groups earlier. Okay, which we've done in a previous notebook when we ran everything manually. Okay, so no inputs per se, uh, but we have all the input information here, okay? And then, of course, two outputs, um, the training data set and the test. test validation data set, okay? Right? And, of course, we need to pass the location of the code, okay? Mm -hmm. And remember we said, okay, how do we connect those things? So here... And, and you said, uh, that was absolutely true, that the outputs of, typically the outputs of a step become the input of the next step, okay? And I'm pretty sure we could have done it like, like that. You know, we could have, uh, you know, we could probably have saved some kind of output in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, step that we could use as, as some kind of input here. But as it happens, there is no input. So how do you know? <laughs> because we use the command line arguments, which is totally fine. But how do we know that this step comes after the two other steps? So this life-saving uh, line of code here is what actually changes this step with mm. the two previous ones. Okay? okay, so in a nutshell, this really creates uh, those two arrows here. Okay, if, you, for, if I didn't have this uh, depends on uh, parameter, then, you know, we would see those two steps as disconnected and, of course, the workflow. Maybe they would run fine, but this, you know, this one would fail because it mm -hmm. would start running, but it wouldn't find the data and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. so, you know, of course, it, it's it's not sense. Okay. So this is how you can explicitly chain um, steps. Okay. It's so, very interesting. Yeah, this looks cool. Yeah, it's it's a uh, so it's one way to do it. I, I think we'll see in the other steps how implicitly when implicitly. you actually when the input the outputs become input, you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, SageMaker automatically figures out, hey, it's that thing is coming from the previous step, so you know it's the previous one and the next one, of course, in the right order. Now let's take a look at the script really quick. Okay, so not. Too complicated. We grab all those command and arguments, where to find the claims feature, where to find the customer's features, um, the name of the Athena database that has the two tables, and, uh, and a bucket name and a prefix name to store um, the, the data sets. Okay. All right. So we grab all that stuff, build some, some path here. Okay. Um, yeah, we wait for the feature store to be ready, which which is fine because mm -hmm. you, you know when you ingest data in the offline feature store, which three means is three. Um, yeah, you need to wait for a few minutes for data to to flow there. So, in case you just created the feature group and the the, the data hasn't correctly flowed to S three, uh, you, you can wait. But in this case, you know, data is available, but it's a good piece of code to have, mm -mm, right? Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's uh, one of those snippets that you wanna keep really around. Is. Okay, then we create uh, an Athena client. We have the name of all the columns. Query. And, okay, what do we do here? Well, we select distinct rows from the claims table, joining on the customer's table, with the policy ID, okay? So mm -hmm. pretty much what you would expect. Yeah. Okay, and we join all the rows. So define the query string, start the query execution, uh, get the results, okay? And then we can just, uh, yep. Then we can just, uh, we download. Uh, so yeah, you might not know that, um, uh, Athena query results are saved as CSV files. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I guess we could grab this as a pandas uh, data frame directly from the query results, mm. uh, which we're not doing here. Here we instead we're going for that CSV file in S3, but why not? And uh, okay, then we load that CSV file, split 8020 for training and test, and save that stuff to uh, a well-known location inside the container, and SageMaker automatically copies that stuff to the S3 output path. Okay, so nothing, uh, nothing complicated, but some good code here. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. some good generic code that you uh, for uh, feature groups and for Athena. So that's why I wanted. I wanted to show it to you. Uh, you can absolutely start from there and uh, you know, copy paste, modify, <laughs> and <laughs> and add that to your own projects. Okay. Okay. So now we have uh, data set objects Ready. in S three. Ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next step is to train. Okay. All right. Next step is to train. So. Here, we're going to use our estimator friend. Again, that XJBoost object is actually the SageMaker estimator for XJBoost, okay? So this is exactly the same code you would use mm. in your uh, training notebook, okay? Hyperparameters, so uh, binary classification, so logistic regression, um, an XJBoost script. We're gonna take a look at this, but no surprises. Uh, okay, where's the, where to store results, hyperparameters, infrastructure requirements, XJBoost version. I mean, the same stuff. It's, it's really the same object, right? So we shouldn't be surprised. And then the training step is really, you know, passing. Uh, so it's receiving the uh, estimator and the inputs, mm -hmm. yes. which is really the same thing that you would pass to uh, the FIT API, right? So it's a training input with the location of the S3 uh, um, training set. Mm -hmm. And, hey, hey, what do we see here? Uh -huh. We see Created. that we actually reuse the output from the previous step. Okay, so it's an example of what you were saying before, um, implicitly chaining steps because the input of this step requires the output of the other step. So unless your brain is wired backwards, you know <laughs> which one comes first. Right? Sometimes <laughs> my brain is totally backwards. Okay, uh, so this is how you uh, this is how you do it, right? Uh, you grab the URI for that output from that step, and that's your input. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we've trained a model. So there are actually two ways to proceed with deployment. Uh -huh. uh, so let's say we are in, a, we're still, even though we're automating, let's say we're still in a dev test mm -hmm. environment, okay. okay? So here we can do it um, pretty much as we've done before. So uh, we create a model object mm -hmm. and we deploy from that, okay? Uh, so that's the purpose of this step. Okay, which is really just creating the model and you know how much I dislike the name of this API because it's not really creating a model, you know, training a model creates a model, right? The, this one should be, I don't know, register model, or I don't know what the name should be, but you know, it's not creating anything. It's just taking that model artifact in S3 and making it available as a SageMaker model that can be deployed, right? Okay. <laughs> So we're doing this. Another step, which is probably, let's go down a little lower. Um, oh, did I miss the register step? Yes, here it is. So um, another way to do this now, if we're in probably a full automation, mm -hmm. let's say a production setting, we want the trained model to be registered in the model registry, which is a, a proper entity in SageMaker, and, and we'll uh, we'll look at that. Okay, so it's exactly what you think. It's you know uh, <laughs> all all the models and their versions and their status, etc. Okay, and this is where where this approval status that we set as a parameter comes in. Okay, 
And so when you register a model, okay, it's in the registry, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And then somebody in the ops team or, you know, can take that model, run whatever tests need to be run on it uh, and, uh, and, and switch the status to approved and deploy it. Right, and maybe deploy it using a Python script. Maybe deploy it using a cloud formation template. There are many ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and we provide some uh, uh, some MLOps uh, templates. Um, just go and take a look at uh, at the doc, at the SageMaker doc, and you'll find some templates. But these are the two, you know, the two uh, uh, routes you can follow, so to speak, right? Um, you can try and do, you can do it the usual way, mm -hmm. you know, so train, create model, and then deploy. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, okay, train, and then put the model in the model registry, mm -hmm. and from then on, it's production stuff. I don't have permission. I shouldn't have permission. Uh, someone will take over. Another team will take over. Make sure the model is good, and then go and deploy, possibly in a different AWS account. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So here we're trying to do both, but mm -hmm. I would expect, you know, in a single workflow, we do one or the other. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So let's come back here. Okay. So we created the model. Okay. And then we run uh, bias metrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just like we've done on uh, in previous episodes so here we are just running pre-training okay. bias so we're actually running this analysis on the data set on data. right and not, not on the trained model yeah. uh, we can do post training as well uh, so you could argue well why do we do this now we could have done this earlier and you know i think that's a fair comment you know yeah. we could have done uh, we could have done this step before, before pre training, pre before yeah? training and we could say, well, if, you know, if uh, bias metrics are awful, then why, why even train? We could oh, even that. before create the dataset, you can try to see the bias. Ah, no, uh, no, 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 we need to yeah, we we need need join. Match. Yeah, yeah, we need exactly. to join. Oh, we could, maybe, maybe we could see some stuff already on, on those two CSV files. Mm. Why not? Uh, but yeah, so another way to build this would be, uh, you know, create data set, then clarify if processor, then train. then train. And you could say, well, check out the output for clarify. If it if it's awful, don't even train. But <laughs> yes. it, it's it's just how we chain those things, you know, that we change. The steps themselves are the same. Mm -mm. It's just how we chain them. Okay. Okay, so here we have this. And if you've watched the previous episodes and we've discussed clarify in great detail, it's really exactly the same code, right? Um, create a, a bias config. Uh, you know, run a bias analysis on That's customer gender, gender specifically for uh, for female, female. drivers, <laughs> uh, because they're actually the uh, the the minority group in this data set. Well, uh, well, yeah, we and split. there's some <laughs> imbalance in the data set, so we could have a legitimate worry that as uh, uh, female drivers are underrepresented in mm -hmm. the data set, there could be some potential bias on how they're how they're uh, predicted. Um, as it turns out, there, there was a little bit. Yeah, it was a little bit. Uh, but after not, the mitigation. And then, yeah, we, we, but, yeah, we, we used it. fancy bias mitigation techniques. <laughs> and then it was all great. Okay, uh, and so we run this analysis. Okay, and the processing step. Again, we have a compute object and the actual step with the inputs. Okay, so the input is a JSON file with the metrics we want to compute. And of course, the data set, which you see once again comes from the output of the training step. So again, uh, implicitly chaining all that stuff. And the output is the, the report, okay? Okay, so then, so we do that model registration thing, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, sorry if I'm repeating myself, don't confuse this with create model. Create model just and now I can't say register, of course. <laughs> Create model makes the model visible in SageMaker so that it can be deployed mm -hmm. in, in the usual way, right? Creating a, a predictor, etc. Registering the model is more powerful because here we're, we're actually creating a, a model, what we call a model package. Okay. Okay. So, of course, there's the model in there. 
but we can also pass content types, response types, uh, instance types that are allowed to, to be used for deployment, oh, yeah. whether we use um, endpoints or batch transform, and approval status, and we can save model metrics. So you can see it's a it's a bigger and more interesting package mm -hmm. than uh, which container than just hey here's the model in S3. Okay, so that's the difference between creating the model, which is just the model itself, and registering a model which you know adds the model uh, as a package to the model registry okay all right um then we deploy the old-fashioned way mm -hmm. okay and we have a uh, uh, we run this uh with a script because th there isn't a deploy step in pipeline okay um uh, the the i guess the the way pipeline should be used is really train register your model in the model registry mm -hmm. and then use some other logic to check approval status and okay. deploy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to deploy, obviously you can, if you want to deploy, you know, in your own account here, et cetera, just for testing purposes, fine. You know, we can just run a script again, using a scale processor that deploys a model. Okay. And you know, it's, it's a simple script. Oh, here it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the wrong screen here. Uh, and we pass the model name and the endpoint instance type, etc. And and we, here we use the Boto 3 API to create an endpoint config Production and an endpoint. Okay, so okay, it's, uh, it's the low level API, uh, but that works too. And, and it creates the endpoint just like we've done previously. Okay, but again, I think this, this is fine for, for testing but you know i i, I guess the, the way to do this is really use the model registry okay okay so now we've defined all those steps okay, okay. and so yeah this is this is how it looks register deploy, okay yeah. so data prep create data set creation and then run clarify okay uh run training and then once we've trained uh, create the model the old way and mm -hmm. deploy the model the old way. And okay, but that left that left hand uh, <laughs> uh, branch here is you know it's probably not what you want to do for full scale production. What you probably want to do is register model, mm -hmm. okay, and and we'll see how the model registry looks in a second and what to do next. Okay, so now we have all the steps. So we just combine them, right? So the pipeline has a name, it has parameters, it has okay. steps. And okay. in case you're wondering, you don't need to pass them in the right order. Are you? Yeah. So if your brain works backwards, you can list them in any order. Oh, okay. Because you uh, know, yeah, okay, SageMaker yeah. will figure out what but, where but the dependencies a... are. Okay. So, but it's better to put it in the good order. I guess. I guess. <laughs> but if you have parallel execution, you know, it's ah, going to look okay, weird okay, anyway. Yeah, so. okay, okay, okay. Don't don't think too hard about it. <laughs> Just list. Make sure you list all the steps. Make sure you list all the parameters, and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, then we uh, uh, absurd or so you know, uh, either uh, insert or update uh, the pipeline definition. Okay. Uh, and we can view it, and then we can start it. Okay. Nice. And then it runs for a little while. Okay. And we start to see blinking stuff. <laughs> in studio but okay before we go into the blinking stuff this is really what uh what the pipeline looks like and this one is kind of elaborate already okay mm -hmm. um but you see the the basic id create all those steps and uh and chain them and, run and, them. Chain them. Okay. and generally i would still advise that you start with uh either separate notebooks or or that you just do it in the simple way mm -hmm. right so create your SageMaker processing jobs and create your estimator. I mean, just do it the way we've been doing it forever. And, and once it runs and when you want to, once you want to automate, start literally copying and pasting this stuff mm -mm. into a single notebook. Because as you, as you saw here, the syntax is extremely close. So it's really easy to move from SageMaker processing jobs to pipeline processing steps. Mm -mm. It's easy to go from training code to training step in pipeline it's very similar right uh so you know take baby steps start make it work make it okay and then start to don't try to do everything at once i it's too much for me okay 
It's good. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> so um, once we start, so here's the endpoint. No, this is okay. This is what I want to see. So, so this is the that's the graph we built, and you can see this stuff. I should show you here, right? So pipelines is where you want to go. Okay, so fraud detect, open this one. Here it is. Okay, so here's the static graph. Mm -hmm. And then you see executions. Okay. Okay, see it failed the first time because I, I had the wrong Docker image for whatever. All right, wrong region, I think. And then it worked. Okay, and this is the execution that you see here. Okay, so now it's green. <laughs> okay, yeah, now it's green and I'm very proud of it. So um, if you click on any step, Mm. Okay, you can see uh, all the input stuff, right? And you can see the output, obviously, the location of those, uh, mm -hmm. those data sets. Uh, you can see the log, right? So that's, in this case, it's going to be the log for the SageMaker processing script. So we, we see the actual... Uh, query that we run, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And obviously for debugging is great because yeah. one of, when one of those steps turns red, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the red stuff here. Okay, so what happened here? Logs. Wrong container. Oh, it has no logs. Oh, ah, here yes, we are, yes, okay. Yes. Uh, pool access denied for blah, 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 blah. Repository does not exist, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. so it's me, right? It's on me, but... but so it's like super useful. Yeah, it's super to... useful. You don't have to... Because uh, there's, there's no log, because uh, it, that job didn't even mm, start, exactly. right? So, you know, I, I can easily see, and it's I think it's the same error on this one. Um, you can easily see what, what went on, and you don't have to... You can do everything in studio. You don't have to go to CloudWatch. You don't mm -mm, have to... Mm -mm. Yeah doesn't have to be complicated. So you can see all those steps here. Right, I really like that. Cool stuff. Okay, um, so this execution worked just fine. Uh, what else did I wanna show you? Um, so we can also see, or uh, I guess we'll see this in a, diff in a different episode, but um, pipelines automatically builds uh, lineage information. Um. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite sure we see this stuff when we click around, uh, but we could see uh, the lineage uh, for uh, each step. So the list of input artifacts, the list of output artifacts. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, when you get all the way down to, hey, here's a model, um, you can use the UI or you can use APIs to go and find uh, all the artifacts that came into this uh, model. Mm -hmm. So uh, what scripts did you use? What data set did you use? Uh, blah, blah, blah. So um, lineage information, but we'll, we'll show you this in maybe in the next episode, okay? And it's all built automatically by pipelines. Okay, so we get to, uh, so we get to an endpoint, but we've seen this before. Uh, it's just a normal endpoint. The, the interesting bit is the module the registration registry. step, okay? So if we go to model, model registry, uh, yeah, we can see, and I guess this is the one. Okay, so you can see I trained three different versions of this model. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I can see the versions. I can see. Let's click on this one. Status. Okay, Status. so this one is pending Did manual, manual approval. approval. And I can see all the settings here. Okay, so I could grab, uh, I could grab this model from the package group, and um, I can, uh, I can basically deploy it uh, in a local account. I can do anything that I want, run some testing. Okay, I could say, okay, I'm I'm happy with this. You know, I'm happy with this model, and then I can go. And approve. approve it. Good model. <laughs> Best model ever. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> All right. Update the status. And now it's approved. So whatever logic you have next, mm -hmm. um, you know, can be triggered 
Uh, so you could have, you know, CloudFormation, you could have scripts that go and check that status to say, well, if the, if a model doesn't have the approved status, you can it. then it's uh, then I won't deploy. It. Okay? okay. And again, I think generally this would be done in uh, in a different account, mm. right? Because um, because different accounts for dev and production, right? Mm. Best okay. <laughs> so yeah, so you can go. You have APIs to go and query this, of course. So again, you can build it manually, or you can use uh, cloud formation templates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we'll try and come back to the ML ops um, angle a little bit in future episodes, uh, but I think we're almost out of time for now. Okay. And uh, so, in a nutshell, this is how you build workflows. You use that SDK to combine the steps, chain them run the pipelines, track the executions, uh, find, debug, yeah, debug, debug, find information on all the logs and on all the steps, read the logs, etc. Uh, use the model registry to store all those different versions. And again, you can have, uh, you can find lineage, uh, lineage information pretty easily. Uh, you can go and approve those models and use some downstream logic to move them around and deploy them in uh, in different accounts um, and I think that's it so uh, yeah as promised so this is the um, this is the music recommendation example from uh, last week okay so if you if you watch that one remember we had three data wrangler steps mm -hmm. okay to prepare uh, tracks and user preferences and ratings and then we combined and split this for training and validation training. and then we trained Register. And here, okay, we use the, I don't, I don't want to call it legacy, but yeah, the traditional way of deploying. There's even a, a model monitor step if you want to see this. And then, of course, we added it to, uh, uh, to the model registry as well. And it's probably around here. Yeah, and it's still pending. Okay, so very cool. You can do all of it in, in SageMaker Studio. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. And then you can query again the model registry decide how you want to deploy okay but we'll try and come back to that very final stage uh in in other episodes give you a sense of uh, the work needed there okay uh well i think that's the end yes yeah. so we run off of time. so here's the okay here's the notebook we used okay so go and uh, go and grab that and uh, yeah, well, that's the end of this episode number four. And uh, next week, I'm not so sure what we're doing, but more, more automation. Healthcare. Uh, are we doing healthcare? Okay. Oh yeah, I, I can, I can take a look. Uh, we are doing. Uh, yeah, we're doing healthcare. Okay, great, <laughs> fine. So let's see what happens. You never know. You never know. We never All right. Know exactly. Okay, go and grab the notebook, start running stuff, and have some fun. Sego, thanks again. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> I hope you guys learned a lot today, and we'll see you next week with more. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.